evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to, to, to tonight's debate. My name is Ariane, and I am your chair. I am the chairman, and Mrs. Manning Bennett is the timekeeper. The adjudicator is Miss Coop. Miss Coop. The topic of this debate is that Fremantle Council is right in its decision to cancel the Australia Day fireworks. The affirmative seat team, sorry, seated to my right is from Pembroke School. The negative team seated to my left is from Adelaide High School. The speaking time for this debate is eight minutes. A single warning bell will sound one minute before the speaking time and a double bell will, will sound at the speaking time. At the speaking time. A continuous bell may be rung 30 seconds after the speaking time, in which case the speaker must sit down immediately. Please ensure that your mobile phones and other electronic devices are switched off. <clears throat> I declare this debate open and call upon the, the first affirmative speaker Hamish Walker. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for our debate is that the Fremantle Council was right in cancelling a firework display. We see the topic to mean that the Fremantle Council was correct ethically, socially and politically in voting in favour of cancelling Australia Day fireworks from 2017 onwards. The fireworks were controversial due to their celebratory nature being culturally insensitive and not in line with Australia's social progress since its colonisation by the British. Therefore, we believe that Australia Day itself, in its current form, is morally wrong and outdated. And as a step towards changing Australia Day, Cancelling the fireworks was the right decision for all the same reasons that celebrating Australia Day as it is, is currently wrong. Today, as first speaker, I'll be talking to you about two main points. First, I'll explain how the Fremantle Council was correct in cancelling the fireworks as they, are, as they are culturally insensitive because Australia Day has come to be seen by the Aboriginal population as a day of depossession. My second point will explore an alternative Australia Day scenario that will respect Aboriginal people and promote inclusiveness and tolerance on our national day. Our second speaker, Sam, will firstly be talking about how cancelling the fireworks is an important symbolic statement against the racism that continues to affect Australia's indigenous people today. Secondly, he will talk about the benefits of the discussion that has been created by the counting of fireworks. Our first speaker, Daniel, will rebut and sum up our team case. Now to my first point. My first point is that the celebratory nature of fireworks is culturally insensitive as some of the population see Australia Day as a tragic reminder of the persecution and deep depossession of the present and the past. Australia Day signifies the beginning of the colonisation of Australia. For a large proportion of the Aboriginal population, January 26th conjures images on the ancestors of change or to quote Aboriginal activist Michael Mansell, the British were armed to the teeth and the slaughter of Aborigines began. For these Aboriginals and other Australians that recognise the incongruity of the Australian Day celebrations, January 26th is considered a sombre, morose and reflective day. Fireworks betray this idea as they signify a celebration. The affirmative team believes that we should not celebrate the day that marked the beginning of more than two centuries of exploitation of the Aboriginal people. For many, Australia Day is a chance to get together with friends and families to watch the fireworks. But this form of celebration on that day that signifies depossession is now outdated in a society that values its multiculturalism. 
perhaps this date will be moved. The Australia Day website states that it is, and I quote, about coming together as a nation to celebrate what's great about Australia and being Australian. This promotes a sense of unity, but the artificiality of fireworks just covers up the persecution of the Aboriginal people that will never allow them to come together. Family Matters number 35 states that the Aboriginals received half the income of fellow Australians. This is largely due to Aboriginals facing job and wage discrimination. The celebratory nature of, Australian, of Australia Day through fireworks is just masking a true social issue for an excuse to turn on the barbecue. This is insensitive and backwards for a nation, as I've already said, that prides itself on its inclusiveness. Aboriginal people object to Australia Day being celebrated on the day. It is because of its enduring emotional and historical significance. We should respect their decision. Australia's first people deserve respect. Overall, the Fremantle Council was correct in cancelling the Australia Day fireworks as they are insensitive to the views of Australia's first people. Now to my second point that an alternative Australia Day, which is not on an emotionally and historically significant day, but, on, but one on the day which respects the Aboriginal heritage of our country and has inclusive celebrations, is much better than the Australia Day we have now. I've already stressed that the Fremantle Council is correct in counting the fireworks, and fireworks are disrespectful in their celebration of the day that mark the beginning of persecution that has affected Aboriginals still alive today and their ancestors. We can still celebrate modern Australia's diverse society and landscape at the same time as acknowledging our country's roots. According to Creative Spirits, an organisation that aims to educate Australians about Aboriginal culture, there are already a variety of events that educate using story and dance. These include the Share the Spirit Festival and the Yavin Festival in Melbourne and their celebration of Aboriginal culture in Canberra. Perth has the Two Solid Concert celebrating native Aboriginal culture. These types of festivals can be expanded on Australia Day and would be a valuable addition to the day. The, the festivals or celebrations would educate the Australian public about Aboriginal heritage while accentuating the diverse and inclusive nature, nature of our nation, which fireworks do not, as they cover up discrimination. Australia Day should be about reflection as well as celebration. It was the right decision to cancel the fireworks due to the controversial nature of Australia Day. The affirmative team suggests that the gap created by the cancelling of the fireworks could be, could be replaced by more meaningful celebrations on a different day that combine reflection and rejoice, rejoicing about what we have achieved as a country. Overall, the Fremantle Council made the right decision in cancelling fireworks as, like Australia Day, they do not accentuate the inclusion of Australia, but other festivals or attractions might be more beneficial. So, Mr Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, the Fremantle Council was right in counting the fireworks because they celebrated the day that instills a sense of pain in the Aboriginal people of Australia to this day. Further, the Fremantle Council was, was right in counting the Australia Day fireworks despite the loss of the good atmosphere that, created, that was created for some people because Australia Day as a whole can be re-established on a different day and be celebrated in a way that represents what it means to be Australian in 2016. Not a white British settler who invaded another country, but a member of a multicultural and increasingly tolerant society. Call upon the first negative speaker, Arabella Walcott. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tonight's debate. Fremantle Council is not right to cancel its Australia Day fireworks. The Council's cancellation of the Indian Ocean fireworks 
an annual much-loved event of Fremantle's Australia Day celebrations is wrong. Our team will explain how in reality the fireworks cancellation has done nothing right for Fremantle and nothing right to further the Indigenous cause or reconciliation. In fact, the cancellation has caused more harm than good, creating controversy, backlash and division, clearly showing that the decision, the decision to cancel was reactive and wrong. Firstly, I'd like to say that we agree with the opposition's definition. And I'd just like to address some of the points the first speaker made. Now, he said that uh, the fireworks are not in line with Australia's social progress. Um, however, Australia Day has changed with Australia and it's become a more inclusive event, especially for Indigenous people. Uh, and if you consider the examples that he used uh, about all the Indigenous festivals um, within all the states of Australia, you can see that. He also mentioned how uh, there's a different event, how we should have a different event on the same day. Um, so why not have the fireworks if you're gonna have another event anyway? Also, they mentioned about how uh, there could be meaningful celebrations on a different day, and that's why the uh, council was right to cancel the fireworks. However, that's not what the council is going to do. They've just canceled the fireworks and they're not rescheduling them. He also mentioned about cultural insensitivity. Um, if the date is the problem, then why not reschedule it instead of cancel? Because what the council has done is cancel it and they haven't rescheduled. And this, this suggests that it's more about cost than anything else. This cancellation is divisive and gets ordinary Australians offside um, in supporting Indigenous issues, which in the end harms Indigenous Australians and doesn't re pay respect to any of their causes. As first speaker, I will discuss Australia Day traditions and tokenism, and our second speaker, Richika, will talk about political correctness gone mad and the negative economic impacts. Firstly, the fireworks cancellation is wrong because it spoils one of our established traditions of the day in, in Western Australia that has brought over, over 50,000 people together to celebrate in the spirit of Australia Day, a day that involves festive activities like barbecues, parades, performances, concerts, and festivals across the nation. It's a family orientated and multicultural day where we celebrate Australia and welcome new citizens or honour Australians for service. According to a poll commissioned by the Institute of Public Affairs, 91% of Australians are proud to be Australian and 85% believe that Australia Day is a day for celebration. Over half of the nation's population of 23 million attend organised community events or get together with family and friends to celebrate and relax on the public holiday. Australia Day is a day to reflect on what we've achieved, what we can be proud of, and a day for us to commit to making Australia an even better place in the future, according to the National Australia Day Council. It's no longer a celebration of colonisation like the original 1880s Foundation Day in Sydney. Instead, it combines celebration and mourning, and the day can contribute to cohesion and reconciliation and acknowledges how the past affects Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders today. Indigenous Australians are honoured with awards and activities acknowledging Indigenous Australians are held in all states. In 2013, the Australian and Aboriginal flag were both raised in Sydney Harbour Bridge for the first time on Australia Day. By cancelling the fireworks, the Council's superficial attempt to placate a minority of Fremantle's population has done more harm than good within the community and according to the advertisers, David Penthery, the decision has got the average person immediately offside, which is divisive and unhelpful. Cancelling the fireworks doesn't achieve anything positive, it just spoils the spirit of the day and does nothing to bring Australia together to make a better place. Now to my next point, the cancelling of the Indian Ocean fireworks display is tokenistic and reactive, leading to controversy and damaging backlash. The Council's firework cancellation trivialises <coughs> Indigenous issues and makes no sense at all when the Council suggests it be replaced by a light show or concert. Cancelling fireworks doesn't enhance understanding, build reconciliation or further the Indigenous cause or concerns about the date of Australia Day. It's just made a lot of people angry, caused a backlash and community division which doesn't help the Indigenous community in Fremantle. This backlash clearly shows that the Council didn't consult widely enough or think it through. Keeping the public holiday, citizenship ceremonies and celebrations, but only cancelling the fireworks, whitewashes over deeply held Indigenous concerns about the 26th of January 
and doesn't advance the Indigenous cause. Ben Wyatt, Labor spokesman for the Aboriginal Affairs, told the Australian the decision was facile, adding that cancelling popular events in the name of reconciliation does not advance the cause and is likely to cause more division. On the ABC, Mr Petit said that the council anticipated mixed public reaction. This was an understatement according to Matilda reporter Chris Graham. Western Australia Today's David Allen Patel reported more backlash and condemnation with far-right groups in Perth and Fremantle planning demonstrations in 2017 and putting together their own fireworks display, along with local Fremantle businessmen who also now want to host their own Australia Day fireworks. The council's decision divided opinions across social media, according to Perth Today's Joel Kelly. Channel 9 attracted over 2,000 largely negative comments in the first few hours, descending into a toxic media suit with thousands of likes. These responses haven't advanced the Indigenous cause. In fact, it's had the reverse effect. Although some activists consider January 26 Invasion Day, Cancelling the fireworks display isn't going to advance this issue because the council will still be holding citizenship ceremonies and celebration lunches on Australia Day anyway. It will still be a public holiday and as Cochrane councillor Kevin Allen sums it up, at the end of the day, you might make a few councillors feel good, but it's not going to change a thing and Australia Day celebrations will continue across Australia anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, let's not forget that this is Australia Day. It's not Fremantle Day. The decision to cancel the fireworks was clearly wrong. It hasn't achieved the council's stated aims, instead causing controversy and just damaging backlash. The action of the council was reactive. It was ill-conceived, short-sighted, tokenistic and divisive, adding nothing to improve cultural sensitivity or build reconciliation. Thank you. In China, the birthplace of fireworks, they're traditionally used to welcome in the new year. At midnight, the sky is lit up, which symbolises the sending out of the old and ushering in the new. Ladies and gentlemen, let's think about this in the context of this current debate, where fireworks symbolise the pushing out and subsequent annihilation of ancient indigenous traditions and cultures to, re to be replaced with a colonial regime of white supremacy and genocide. Ladies and gentlemen, the topic we have been presented with for this debate, the Fremantle Council was right in cancelling their Australia Day fireworks, is ultimately a moral question of whether a decision based on the grounds of cultural and racial sensitivity was the right one. Fremantle's the Fremantle Council's actions were out of respect for Indigenous Australians, and to say that they were wrong in making this decision is to say that the path they're choosing of reconciliation and respect is and to say that the path they are choosing of reconciliation and respect is the wrong one is advocating a reconciliatory step backwards. To begin with, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to address some of the assertions made by the opposition. So, to begin with, one of the primary premises of the opposition argument is that Australia Day has changed now, and it's got nothing to do with colonisation, and there's no point in changing it now, and there's no sort of progress being made to further the reconciliation cause. However, I don't really agree with this statement because Australia Day, it really cannot change until we acknowledge and come to terms with our past actions in our colonial history. And the first step to doing this is the highly symbolic gesture of cancelling the fireworks. And furthermore, they also spoke a lot about the controversy that this issue has stirred up. I'll discuss this in greater detail later but I believe that this is a good thing and that discussion is healthy and it's the first step in making change in such a sort of nuanced social issue. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I will be addressing the immediate positive impacts of cancelling the fireworks in both its symbolic value as a statement against racism and also the discussion it has created. As Hamish has already discussed, Australia Day in its current form is ignorant and culturally insensitive with fireworks as one of the most public and unapologetic manifestations of this viewpoint. Overall, Australia is transitioning so that we recognise the past treatment of Indigenous Australians, 
for example, the push for colonization to be instead considered invasion, and the jovial celebrations that remain in Australia Day simply do not align with this. However, Australia Day seems to exist in isolation from this widespread social movement as the last stand of ignorance and insensitivity. The cancellation of Fremantle's fireworks is a statement directly against the lack of inclusivity and isolation that Australia Day in its current form perpetuates. It would be wrong for the Fremantle Council to continue ignoring what Australia Day actually represents, and the same applies Australia-wide. It follows then that cancelling the fireworks is the right thing to do in the, the way that it presents a very public and clear first step in acknowledging the painful early years of post-colonisation Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, the scars of the past remain in the stolen generation, in the massacres that continued into the 1920s, and the terrible disparity in opportunities of Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians. In the celebratory spirit that the Australia Day website promotes, this is all ignored and these violent acts are obscured. On Australia Day this year, hundreds of Indigenous Australians marched the lawns of the Hobart Parliament House in protest of what Australia Day symbolises. The Fremantle's decision to the Fremantle Council's decision to cancel the fireworks is a statement of solidarity with Indigenous Australians. It has extraordinary symbolic value in what it means for social justice movements, such as the Recognise Movement, in that now, on a government level, people are standing up, almost unanimously, and saying, yes, I agree with you, this needs to be done. It is right. And it is what need, is needed to happen, and furthermore is a natural progression from such a grassroots move, movement. It is a tangible piece of action and establishes a clear intention of the Fremantle Council to acknowledge its past and give the long overdue recognition to Indigenous Australians. It is clear then that, Freeman, that the Fremantle Council is aware and listening and this decision was the right one. Secondly, ladies and gentlemen, there has been extraordinary controversy and public outcry surrounding this change to Fremantle's traditional celebrations. However, there is extraordinary value in the public discussion it has created. What this decision has done is ask all of Australia to reflect upon the crimes of colonialism and the lasting impact on Indigenous Australians and ask ourselves, is this really how we should be commemorating this? It has the potential to promote nationwide change of acknowledging what Australia Day means in regards to its historical significance for Indigenous Australians and also in recognising the colonial past of Australia and what it means now. In looking at the responses to, Fremantle, to, the, three, the, to the Fremantle Council statements, it has been able to inflame a subculture of ignorance and racism among the Australian people. For example, the comments of some of the magazine articles this, on the, the Australian and the advertiser have, have posted have been aggressive, racist and ignorant with some comments saying that there was no Australia before colonisations or accusation of no culture among Indigenous Australians. Exposing and addressing this lack of sensitivity and acknowledgement is the first step in making change. In this sense, it is also lending itself to the furtherment of broader awareness and education of the issues facing Indigenous Australians. This explosion of public interest and involvement makes the Fremantle's Council's decision to address this topic the right one. Discussion is the first step for making a change in an issue like this, and when considering the issue as a whole, the Fremantle Council's decision to cancel the fireworks is also right as the first step in changing this. Ladies and gentlemen, fireworks may only be fireworks, but they represent so much more. The Fremantle Council was right to cancel them on the grounds of what this action symbolises being a tangible gesture of acknowledgement and solidarity with Indigenous Australians and having catalyzed necessary discussion and public interest in significant social issues. It is not Indigenous Australians alone who believe that Australia Day in its current form is ignorant and backwards. And the Fremantle Council is right and shows the way forward in creating an inclusive, respectful and sensitive Australia Day. Thank you. Call upon the, sec the second negative speaker, Ruchika Lumba. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. 
uh, the topic for today's debate is that the Fremantle Council is right in its decision to cancel the Australia Day fireworks display. And as the second speaker of the, neg of the negative team, I definitely oppose the motion. Our first speaker talked about how the cancellation has hampered the entire ongoing traditions of Australia and how the entire process of cancelling the fireworks is tokenistic as it whitewashes the real issues and does not focus on the actual cause, something which I will elaborate upon in my speech. I will also be talking about the political correctness behind this decision and why this step is not what it actually stands for, that is being a culturally appropriate step. And I will also be talking about the negative impacts that this entire step has had on the economy of the Fremantle uh, area. Um, I will address the following rebuttal points during my speech. Um, speaker 1 mentioned how there have been alternatives mentioned by the council and that the ones that he mentioned are in all form and shape, definitely forms of celebration. So whether you have fireworks or those, it's just the same thing. So cancellation of fireworks doesn't really uh, apply in those situations. Um, Secondly, from what I gather from the first two speeches of the opposition's uh, speeches, I only found that their basic foundation is on the colonization period and how the entire fireworks is just depicting colonization primarily. And this is just a 180 degree deviation, I feel, from their own definition, which is what I'm going to be addressing in my speech. And the second speaker also went on to talk about how it is an unapologetic representation of the viewpoint and that the entire step is a solidarity with the indigenous people. Well, this step is an undergraduate display of gesture politics and therefore definitely invites ridicule. This day commemorates celebration and therefore does not deserve to be turned into an annual guilt trip. We Australians have every right to celebrate the, the good and the long ongoing good history, relatively good history of Australia and to my mind, these sequence of events are definitely overblown and counterproductive and they only succeed at putting modern Australians offside, making them feel ashamed of something that happened more than 200 years ago. From all that, the Fremantle Council's decision to replace fireworks with the display of orgy of self-loathing will succeed at just one thing, putting an average Australian offside immediately. There are several countries in the world with a lot worse history of violence and division, who are doing a much, much better job at handling the political division of their past. The best example is Mexico, which witnessed extraordinary violence of Spanish conquests against various indigenous nations and is still standing strong and supports all its members. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what I mean by Fremantle Council's measure being politically correct. The, ca the cancelling of the event in the name of conciliation does not advance the cause. Like the opposition argued that this pays respect to the indigenous communities, but Prime Minister's indigenous advisor, I repeat, the indigenous advisor, Warren Mundin, slammed the decision as a silly mistake and went on to say that this would rather offend the Aboriginal people. And just like our first speaker mentioned, Ben Wyatt, the indigenous labor MP, again, indigenous labor MP, said that the decision would cause more division. And ladies and gentlemen, division has begun, has begun, has begun. Uh, but people, are op people who are openly supporting this decision are said to have lost friends are, and are being denigrated openly on social media. My team and I here are not saying that we should be ashamed of our past and like the council is clearly is, but all we are trying to say is that yes, we honestly need to know about our past, respect it, and the feelings of those who understandably don't feel like celebrating on January 26th. But the Council's effort in every shape and form represents a more symbolic move of promoting equality of Indigenous communities in Australia. However, it is overstepping the upliftment and enjoyment of fireworks. Nobody wants to discredit what Aboriginal people have been through over the years. But, like they've talked about colonization, Australia Day is not about colonization. It is about celebrating the fact that we are Australians. Um, they also mentioned about it being a symbolic move repeatedly. But this symbolic move has attracted a lot of skepticism because the move of the council has been labelled 
as a way to save money. Well, I say this because the Council's committee reports it states, um, let me quote, we need to consider ongoing costs of fireworks, and thus this is our attempt to move towards a more cost-effective celebration. However, in my opinion, this does not even serve this latent cost effectively. From a financial point of view, this will hurt shops, restaurants and pubs. It is going to lead to a crash in retail, exodus in jobs. I mean, a decline in business in general. This is because small-scale cottage industries will lose out on ways to make money, and the council and the city will lose out on money from tourism and taxes. People come to Australia to see Australia, not a washed out version of its former self, something that the council is clearly trying to project, just in case the contemporary form doesn't offend someone. The council is known to, known to have spent about $250,000 on just the fireworks alone excluding the fees of the personnel who set up the event and run it. Um, the decision to scrap the major event has been heavily opposed by the Fremantle Chamber of Commerce, which reported that Australia Day Fireworks actually in injects about $2.5 million into local economy, especially hospitality and marine. Chief Executive of Chamber of Commerce, Ms. Owen, has also claimed that zero consultation was done with them before the council pulled the pin. Well, agreed, the council's representatives talked about a lot of things, ranging from light shows and projections to concerts on January 26, much synonymous to their alternate ways. But then again, if the whole purpose of, abst of abstaining the bursting of crackers is to incorporate cultural sensitivities, then aren't these events aspects of celebration too? The council indeed adopted has adopted a paradoxical stand on the issue because on one hand it's cancelling fireworks and on the other hand it's rescheduling it. If the whole idea of axing the event is to encourage respect for cultures, then why not adopt a better means? I mean, removing fireworks just sparks more controversy and cultural insensitivity. What's required is raising awareness. Derek Parfit, a British philosopher, has said that the first step towards change is awareness. The second is acceptance, and the last, ladies and gentlemen, is action. So if there is no awareness amongst the people about issues and their depth, there is, no going to, there is not going to be any acceptance, and definitely no motivation for action. Thus, in conclusion, all I'd like to say is that the Fremantle Council is not right in cancelling the Australia Day fireworks. Thank you. Call upon the third affirmative speaker, Daniel Gaysborough. <clears throat> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The first thing I'd like to address in this debate is something that my speakers have already touched on um, in this debate already. Why did the council actually make this decision to cancel the fireworks? They made this decision because they communicated with the Aboriginal community around Fremantle and based on the evidence, they decided that they were significantly distressed about um, what Australia Day means to them. And so the, the Fremantle Council decided that they had to cancel the fireworks um, because it's a culturally sensitive day. And, and they didn't just consult a couple of ministers. So what this means, what this debate is about, it's not about fireworks. I mean, the opposition expressed confusion that they were cancelling fireworks, but then they were rescheduling them on another day. So how is this about fireworks? Well, you're right, it's not about fireworks, and it's not about cost either. This is actually about the day itself. It's not even about what takes place on the day, not even about the celebrations that happen nowadays, but it's about the importance of the day itself. It's, it's not about cost, because the Fremantle Mayor himself says that um, every year the... the Fireworks cost between $100,000 and $120,000, and that money will be reused on different kinds of uh, events on a different day to celebrate Australia, um, which is what I'll be talking about later, um, echoing my first speaker. So, something that was brought up by the opposition um, at First Negative was, Australia Day has changed, and it doesn't stand for colonialism anymore. That's not what it's about. But... The thing is, that's not the perception of the Aboriginal people to whom it has significance. And the fact that they refute that that is what Australia Day uh, is about 
annuls their argument because that's what this is about. This is about what does uh, what importance do we place on the Aboriginal people in our society, in our country, and do we respect them with this decision? Aboriginal people view this as the day when uh, years of persecution and exploitation began and they regard it as an invasion day or even survival day as in the day they survived um, year, hundreds of years of um, violence by the British Navy and British settlers and this is reflected in their objections to the day. So then she went on to say on this day, on this day that has changed, there's a lot of good points um, it's fun, it brings people together, it brings most people together, um, and we totally agree. And that's why um, the affirmative team proposed that there should be something that, like what the council itself proposed, there should be um, a different day. We think a different Australia Day could be created um, that would include Aboriginal people and not be on this sensitive day. And so the fireworks being cancelled is relevant to this because it's a step towards changing uh, and perhaps one day getting rid of or renaming Australia Day as something more like Invasion Day or Survival Day because that's what it really is. And then having a separate day in which we do celebrate what Australia means today for um, its multi multicultural society. So, um, and there was a little bit of confusion, would we have fireworks on this day? Yes, like the affirmative team doesn't actually hate fireworks. It's not what this debate is about. Sure, we could have fireworks on that day if it happened. Um, so w what this debate is about is the date itself. And so what I'm wondering is, would the negative team, and does the negative team think that Australians have a problem with the day being moved? Like, do they mind that we, s we are celebrating on the day that another country's navy came and invaded its local people? Or, because um, it's not about the cost, it's, it's not about the fireworks, um, it's not about the activities that can happen on the day. They can happen on a different day. It's about the day, the, the date itself. It's not a logistical issue to move this to a different day. It's not like this will cost millions, billions of dollars just to move it to another day that doesn't happen to be on this particular day. So what it's about, it's not about cost. It's about the symbol and it's about what that means. And the opposition says that we value Aboriginals in our society We've, they've been given awards and they've achieved various positions in our society. Okay, so if we do value them, then why don't we pay them the respect of moving it from this day when they were invaded? And another uh, point that kept recurring in the opposition's case was that, in fact, uh, cancelling the fireworks will have backlash and actually have a negative effect um, on the cause for Aboriginal equality. However, I just reject this because um, it actually, as uh, Sam, our second speaker, pointed out, creates discussion. I don't think that the people who are spouting hate about this happening hate Aboriginal people because they cancelled the fireworks. I think they already hated them, and this is, this is bringing out the hatred and airing the racism and allowing a coherent discussion to occur um, about whether we do value Aboriginal people in our society today and whether we do pay them the respect of not having Australia Day on a day that can't include them. Finally, there was an economic point um, brought up by the opposition saying that Fremantle will suffer um, and the Chamber of Commerce wasn't consulted. That's really not important to me because obviously they have a financial interest. Maybe there is a financial factor to the fireworks, but what the affirmative team is saying is that there's a larger symbolic importance and that it's not okay for the negative team to say, yeah, we value Aboriginal people, but when there's a bit of uh, economic interest involved, then we kind of put that to the side. Like, the symbolic and respect that we have for Aboriginal people comes above that. And so that's really not a relevant point in this debate, especially given that we're advocating and the Fremantle Council advocates that there would be a different Australia Day um, and different day with other activities that could attract the same commerce anyway. Today, my first speaker, Hamish, began by talking to you about how the fact that Australia Day is the anniversary of the British landing on Australian shores, foreshadowing more than 220 years of violence and discrimi discrimination, um, and because of this, it is still a day of sadness for Aboriginal people. In this, Hamish raised the point that if many of us who are the descendants of those British settlers believe we had made 
have made any progress in the last 220 years, and if we believe that we do respect Australia's Indigenous people, then it is only right that we stand with them in solidarity against the wrongs of our own ancestors. For the affirmative team tonight, that entails standing against celebrating Australia Day in its current form, and also therefore entails supporting the Fremantle Council's decision to cancel its Australia Day fireworks. This brought Hamish to talk about his second point, the affirmative teams that uh, sees that Australia Day is no longer uh, what it was 220 years ago, and that it is a well-loved and increasingly inclusive celebration. But then, should we not move it to a more appropriate day and maintain much of its form of current form of celebration? Hamish talked to you about how the alternative Australia Day that the, alter that the affirmative team advocates should take place on a different day, should be inclusive to Australia's first people and all other Australian, uh, Australians from any country. It should allow Australians to reflect on the past of our country and be optimistic about a better future. My second speaker, Sam, talked about the symbolic value the cancellation of the fireworks has already had. Uh, and in demonstrating that some of us as white Australians are capable of coming to terms um, and beginning to address the past, he went on to talk about the benefits that the controversy has already had in creating discussion. Ladies and gentlemen, the Fremantle Council cancelled its Australia Day fireworks because of the discussions it's had with the Aboriginal people in its area. Do we respect Aboriginal people in Australia? We have to make a decision. How much importance do we place on Aboriginal people in our society today? The affirmative team says that the Fremantle Council was right to cancel its Australia Day fireworks. <laughs> Call upon the third negative speaker, Sophie Ladd. Good evening, everyone. As we all know by now, the topic of today's debate is that um, Fremantle was right in its decision to cancel the Australia Day fireworks, and we have the negative team obviously believe the statement to be false. As we've briefly gone over today, um, we believe that the statement is false because it breaks family traditions and it creates some um, controversy and controversy and division in the community, as well as ignores a problem rather than addressing it. It's um, politically correct to the point of alienation and creating decisiveness within the, within the community and has um, negative financial implications for the local community. Um, today I'd just like to address the opposition's points and summarise our case. The first speaker has um, <coughs> said in a large line within their team case was that Australia Day itself is morally wrong, particularly the date. We, however, would like to say that whilst the Australia Day's history is, by no, is definitely related, um, Australia Day versus Invasion Day is outside the scope of this debate. We're not arguing the merits of Australia Day, we're arguing specifically the Fremantle Fireworks, and we believe that this was reaching outside the Council's decision and the topic of today's debate. Um, regardless, Australia Day has been shifting meanings. The first speaker of the affirmative team talked about the um, Australia Day Council's definition of Australia Day and how it's about um, bringing, to get, bringing our communities together and um, celebrating what we've become and who we are t striving to become rather than um, staying rooted in our dark history. Um, another point of the opposition was that celebrating fireworks is culturally insensitive. However, this is a minority view for a lot of people and under utilitarianism we can say that for the greatest good for the greatest number of people that having that event here now in the present that brings people together and brings communities together is um, beneficial rather than insensitive. Um, under in, when it's fireworks happen, everyone likes fireworks. We've all said that. Um, it brings people together. People come and see fireworks. We'll have communities, indigenous communities come and see fireworks as well. There may be some members who do not, but on the large part they do. In fact, um, a, a poll done of that of the um, indigenous community in that region found that 72% of the Aboriginal um, popul um, community there did not agree with the decision to change um, to cancel the fireworks and enjoyed going there themselves. Um, once again, the large line was that the date is the problem. That's not within the debate. And also, Fremantle has been rescheduling other Australia Day events, so why not reschedule the fireworks? If the problem is the date, specifically the date of colonisation, why couldn't we just reschedule the fireworks to another day and celebrate National Pride on a date that is culturally appropriate in the eyes of those who view it as insensitive? We can still celebrate Australia Day by acknowledging other things. We don't. Fireworks and acknowledgement don't have to be mutually exclusive things. Australia Day is a 24-hour period, 
and as the opposition has said, there has been there are numerous um, events and activities that acknowledge and celebrate Indigenous communities, acknowledge our past, um, our time of reconciliation, and also times to celebrate our national pride, such as the Aussie barbecue and fireworks. We can include both events. We don't have to say, let's cancel the celebratory bit so we can focus on the reflection bit. We can do both. And I believe that that would be a better way of bringing together our community and moving forward with the new modern, I suppose, definition of Australia Day. Um, the second speaker opened his debate by talking about fireworks and saying how they symbolise sending out the old and in the new and talked about how that was pushing aside the Aboriginal roots and the Aboriginal heritage of our land and bringing in the new white supremacy regime. However, this is a, a bit of a reaching intention and we could easily um, reinterpret the fireworks to be a thing of sending out our dark history, our history of oppression and welcoming in our new inclusive community. That's an entirely subjective interpretation of fireworks and it could easily create a positive message out of that rather than a negative one. The um, second speaker also talked a lot about reconciliation and we would like to point out that this has been created alienation, not reconciliation. When you have a cause such as the Indigenous cause and you focus on, I suppose, a more minor issue rather than the very real issues that the opposition brought up, such as um, the jailing rate of Indigenous people in the, as opposed to the white population. Um, by creating hostilities within the minor communities, you put people offside and you draw their attention away from the real issues and end up alienating them and just making people desensitised to real issues by making them think that, oh, you know, the Indigenous problem is solved. They're just complaining about petty things like fireworks rather than focusing on the very real inequalities that do exist within the society. The opposition talked a lot about fireworks being a, the symbol, symbolic value of cancelling fireworks. However, it's an empty symbol, as we've discussed and as our, my teammates have discussed, that this has created a lot of hostility, a lot of open angriness in the community and in the wider community outside of Fremantle. Um, cancelling a celebration isn't a way to bring about a positive change or a positive idea of the topic. We need to change the mentalities of the people, not the events. This has only created hostilities. Um, yeah. Um, your second speaker's point was a lot about discussion, um, this opening up discussion, opening up new ideas, and talked a lot about hostile discussion. However, we would say that this fireworks um, shenanigan has been putting lots of people and has provided a platform for hate speech. It has allowed people to come out into the public eye rather than a private eye and preached hate publicly and that's been well received for a large amount of the part. There has been a lot of backlash over the fireworks and it's opened up, I suppose, discussion but not the sort of discussion that we'd be wanting. It's also important to note that we can educate and still have an open discussion and still have fireworks. Once again, celebration and reconciliation are not mutually exclusive things. The idea of Australia Day being ignorant and the date once again a little bit outside the scope of the debate but with once again we can reschedule the fireworks, we can reschedule our celebrations. As the opposition said, we don't have to cancel the um, celebrations. The cancelling act in itself is a way of sweeping issues under the rug and not addressing the problems, just sort of trying to put them out of sight. And bringing, the fireworks do bring people together and they bring a community together. And to cancel an event that brings people together is wrong in the sense of um, uh, addressing a, uh, the idea of bringing cultures together. Also, I'd like to point out that the opposition has talked a lot about the Aboriginal people feeling um, marginalised or feeling that this Australia Day celebrations are culturally insensitive. However, whilst they've been saying Aboriginal people a lot, you've um, not quoted any Indigenous leaders or any Indigenous people specifically. However, um, Aboriginal leaders such as Mundy and O'Donoghue have publicly called it a mistake saying it was a cost-cutting way and it was offensive to the Aboriginal people to um, just discard an issue rather than address it and try to focus on the real problems. In fact, the National Database, with a recent survey by ABC supporters, as I said before, says that 72% um, of the Aboriginal community are not happy about the cancellation. So, and also the idea of this as being a purely pure act, I suppose, or an act of pure intentions aimed at um, simply addressing the issue of cultural sensitivity and distressed individuals. But however, they're saying we should have a light show next year instead of a um, fireworks display. They're still celebrating. It's a different kind of celebration, but they're not saying let's get rid of the celebrations. They're not saying we should reflect more. They're saying we're just going to celebrate in a different, slightly cheaper way. 
And um, so, in conclusion, Australia Day itself, I'm sorry, the Fremantle Council made the wrong decision to cancel its fireworks display because it broke family um, traditions, it's created hostility within a community without addressing real change. They have whitewashed the history, they have swept the issue under the rug rather than addressing it and addressing the larger issues. And in doing so, they've created this political correct spectrum, I suppose, where real issues are being disregarded under the social media flames of this recent issue. Thank you.